بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يذل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور مهدثاتها وكل مهدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So brothers, uh, we reach this page here, page 107. Uh, so inshallah, we will continue from here. Uh, just a reminder to uh, you brothers, um, this is the last lesson uh, that we'll be having with regards to this book uh, until after Ramadan and Eid. So this will be our last lesson, inshallah. So um, it's going to be a little bit shorter than uh, normal. So uh, let's go through uh, what the Sheikh is saying. So... Um, as you can see, we were just, we finished this part here, just the top, uh, the last part of page 106. So we'll start from there, inshallah. <clears throat> the Sheikh says, Ad-dalilu ala rububiyyatihi wa ilahiyyatihi subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ad-dalilu qawluhu ta'ala ومن آياته الليل والنهار والشمس والقمر لا تسجدوا للشمس ولا للقمر واسجدوا لله الذي خلقهن إن كنتم إياه تعبدون سورة فصلة بس 37 So then the Sheikh begins uh, the next chapter within the book that we're going through um, and there's evidence quoted here so the title of the, of the chapter is uh, The Evidence for uh, the evidence for the lordship of Allah, his lordship and his ilahiya. And uh, I'll explain that a little bit. I don't think there's a uh, English word we can use, just one word that would explain that. So um, ilahiya is like um, where Allah is deserved of all worship. And why is he deserved of all worship? The tawheed of Allah, yeah? Uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then the shaykh, Points, uh, points us towards this, uh, shows us this evidence which we just said from the Quran, verse from the Quran, Surah Fusilat. So if we uh, go to the translation of that, verse 37 of Surah to Fusilat, and we read that, we'll see. And from among his signs are the night and the day, and the sun and the moon. Prostrate not to the sun nor to the moon, but prostrate to Allah who created them if you really worship him so that's quite clear to us and we were discussing some of uh, this um uh, in the last lesson so this is a follow-on now so that's clear to us that i uh, very clear the translation of it so then the sheikh he said we'll start from here there the just stop part here the sheikh says he says come to shahiduna mina sayarat al marmiya wa ta'irat wal bawakhir ma ma annaha qawiyatun وَمُؤْتَنَ بِهَا لَكِنَّهَا تَخْرُبْ وَتَتَعَتَّلْ هَلْ تَعَتَّلَ هَلْ تَعَتَّلَ اللَّيْلِ أَوْ تَعَتَّلَ النَّهَارِ لَا لِأَنَّ صَانِعُهُ أَوْ لِأَنَّ صَانِعَهُ قَدِيرٌ حَكِيمٌ جَلَّ وَعَلَى سُنَّ اللَّهِ الَّذِي أَتْكَنَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ So then the Shaykh he says, he says from the cars that we see, the vehicles that are around us on the planet, the vehicles, the cars, and the, you know all the types of vehicles, uh, the planes that fly in the sky, and the ships that sail in the sea, right? They, even though that these entities or vehicles are strong, right? They are strong, they have strength, um, they are taken care of, they're given that care, they, you know, they end up becoming corrupted and they, you know, they are false in them and, you know, they become useless. 
Then the Shaykh says, do you see the same thing in terms of something becoming useless or not working when we look at the night and the day? Do we see that, that all of a sudden the night stops and that's it? Or the day stops, for example, and it doesn't move and that is it? And the answer is no. So uh, the Sheikh asks, asks a, uh, a rhetorical question. The answer is no, obviously. Uh, and then the Sheikh says, he says, because the one who created them is the all capable, the wise Jalla wa'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he quotes the ayah, which we just read, the short ayah from Surah Al-Naml, part of the ayah. And if we go to Surah Al-Naml, verse 88, and have a look there, we will see why. So um, let's read the part that's, uh, that's to do with uh, the point being made here. The Sheikh, uh, the, uh, uh, the Sheikh quotes this ayah, or part of the ayah from verse 88. The work of Allah who perfected all things. Yeah. So what Allah created is perfect, the night and the day. Um, we see that, you know, alhamdulillah, the night and the day, you know, one follows the other without fail. So uh, the Sheikh's making that point here. So let's continue. So point seven, we're on point seven now. The Sheikh continues and he says, هَذَا دَلِيلٌ عَلَىٰ رُبُوبِيَّتِهِ وَإِلَٰهِيَّتِهِ سُبْحَانُ وَتَعَالَىٰ وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارُ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ So then the Sheikh says, this is the evidence of Allah's Lordship and that He's deserved of all worship, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then quotes, uh, and the Sheikh quotes another ayah, and he says, which we read earlier on, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارُ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ And from his signs are the night and the day and the sun and the moon. So the Sheikh continues and he says, أَشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ أَشَّمْسُ الْكَوْكَبُ الْعَظِيمُ الَّذِي يُدِيءُ الْكَوْنَ سِرَاجٌ وَهَاجَ كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَجَعَلْنَا سِرَاجٌ وَهَاجَ وَالْقَمَرُ وَالْقَمَرُ نُورٌ يُدِيءُ اللَّيْلَ وَيُدِيءُ الطَّرِيقَ لِلنَّاسِ وَمِنْ مَصَالِحِهِمَا أَيْضًا إِصْلَاحُ الْكَوْنِ بِأَشْجَارِهِ وَثِمَارِهِ وَبِحَارِهِ فَلَوْ اخْتَفَتْ الشَّمْسِ عَنِ الْكَوْنِ بِتَذَرَّرَ الْقَوْنِ وَفَسَدَتْ كَثِيرٌ مِنْ مَعَايِشِ النَّاسِ وَمَصَالِحِهِمْ ولاختفى القمر كذلك القمر أيضا فيه منافع للثمار والأشجار مع ما فيه أيضا من معرفة الحساب قال تعالى قال تعالى والقمر والقمر نورا وقدر وقدره منازل لتعلم عدد السنين والحساب وقال تعالى يسألونك عن الأهلة قل هي مواقيت للناس والحج We'll just stop there. That's a long paragraph. So then the Sheikh breaks down the ayah about, you know, the night and the day, uh, the sun and the moon, which has been mentioned here uh, in, in the original ayah that we read at the start of this lesson. So the Sheikh says the, uh, the uh, sun and the moon. He says the sun and the, uh, and the moon, they're like planets, the great planets or, or beings. And as, as we know, they uh, they enlight, they obviously give light to the day so that we can see, yeah, like a bright lamp. And then the Sheikh quotes an ayah from Surah An-Naba. So let's go there and have a look at the translation. And have made therein a shining lamp, the sun. So the shining lamp that's been mentioned is a shining lamp, meaning the sun. Uh, so then the Sheikh continues and he says, and the moon, likewise the moon, you know, you know, it also lights, you know, enlightens the night. It reflects, as we know, that it reflects the light from the sun. It, 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 it gives light to the night so that you can, you can find your way in the darkness. And also from their benefits, the sun and the moon also is that it, it rectifies, it rectifies, for example, you know, and allows the you know, the trees to live, the um, you know uh, fruits to grow, things like that. Because the Sheikh mentions, for example, if there was no sun and it was just taken away and it was hidden, for example, it would obviously cause uh, 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 the crops to you know fail. You know they won't grow. 
you know, uh, uh, same was likewise without light, was nothing would exist, you know, it requires light, for example, the trees, the crops, etc. Uh, and so the Sheikh mentions an example for us, and you know, same uh, was likewise, if we didn't have the moon uh, during the night, it would be difficult to find your way around, and the moon also has its benefits as well, as the Sheikh mentioned. And then the Sheikh quotes two ayahs with additional evidence with regards to the moon. So if we have a look at those, so the first of them, of the two, is from Surah, Surah to Yunus and the other one's from Surah Al-Baqarah. So let's go to Surah to Yunus first. Let me read that. It is he who made the sun a shining thing and the moon as a light and measured out its stages, or their stages, that you might know the number of years and the reckoning. Allah did not create this, but in truth, he explains the ayat, proofs, evidences, verses, lessons, signs, revelations, etc. in detail for people who have knowledge. That's the first ayah. Let's go to Surah Al-Baqarah now. They ask you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about the new moons. Say, these are signs to mark fixed periods of time for mankind and for the pilgrimage. So that's that part of the ayah that the Shaykh has mentioned here. And so we can see that Obviously, the moon, the sun, and the moon have benefits, and particularly the moon as well uh, allows us to calculate time. So we know what time period we're in. You know, we use that as as a calculation of time. So the Sheikh continues, and he says, he says here, "Fafil ahillati maslahatun." لمعرفة المواقيت والأجال أجال الديون وأجال العدد للنساء ومواقيت العبادات والصيام والحج كلها تعرف بالحساب المبني على هذين النيرين الشمس والقمر فالحساب الشمسي والحساب القمري فيهما مصالح للخلق أجمعين So then the Sheikh says that you know with the phases of the moon for example uh, was mentioned in these ayahs that we just read, the translation of. Well, he explains this further and he says, look, there's a benefit for mankind here in terms of the phase of the moon. So we know that uh, time periods, time and time periods. For example, give some few examples, as many. It says, for example, where, you know, you know the time periods of debts or settling debts and things like this. Uh, women, the women folk know uh, that in terms of knowing the time period of their idda, for example, in various situations. For example, husband may have died, there's idda for that. Um, uh, uh, during divorce and things like that, there's idda period. So with the with the use of what Allah has given us, the sun and the moon, and the moon particular here, we can calculate the time, the days that go by, etc. Um, and so uh, uh, that explains it quite clearly. The Sheikh also gives a different example here. He says, for example, knowing in terms of fasting, you know, making the pilgrimage, hajj, etc. All of this, he says, it's it's by, uh, you know, calculating the days and time and, you know, uh, and, and using the sun and the moon uh, and relying on the sun and the moon to calculate the time periods for our benefit. And, and, and of course, this has a, bene a great benefit for us on the planet. And so it's a benefit for the creation. All of the creation, not just in al insan, the humankind, but every everything from the creation. So the Sheikh continues and he says, "Women, makhlukatihi al samawat sab qala taala Allahu aladhi khalaq sab samawat wa min al ardi mithlahun, aladhi khalaq sab samawat intibaqa, baadha baadha fuq baad." السماء الدنيا, الدنيا ثم التي تليها إلى السابعة وفوق الجميع عرش الرحمن سبحانه وتعالى. So then the Sheikh moves on to the uh, uh, the next point and he says and from his creation are the seven heavens. And then the Sheikh says that he quotes an ayah but we will go back to that in a second. So the seven heavens he mentions the seven heavens the seven skies the seven heavens. Uh, each one is above the next in order up until we reach the highest point and above that is the throne of Ar-Rahman. The throne of Allah is above the seventh heaven, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's go back to uh, the ayahs that were quoted here, two short ayahs from here. 
So let's go back. The first one is from Surah Al-Talaq. So let's go there. Verse 12. It is Allah who has created seven heavens and of the earth the like thereof, i.e. seven. So that's clear for us. And then the next ayah is from Surah Al-Mulk, verse 3. Surah Al-Mulk, verse 3. Let's go there. And the translation of that is, who has created the seven heavens one above another? You can see no fault in the creations of the most beneficent. Then look again, can you see any rifts? So um, that's clear as well, as in what the Sheikh has mentioned. Let's continue. Wal aradina sab'a kama qala ta'ala wa min al-ardi mithlahunna fahiyya sab'u tibaqin aydan wa kullu tibqat wa kullu tibqatin وَتَبَقَتٍ مِنْ تَبَقَاتِ السَّمَاوَاتِ السَّبَعِ وَالْأَرْضِينَ لَهَا سُكَانٌ وَمَارٌ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ مِنْ الْكَوَاكِبِ وَالْأَفْلَاقِ شَمْسُ وَالْقَمَرِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مِنْ الْمَخْلُوقَاتِ مِنْ الدَّوَابِ بِاخْتِلَافِ أَنْوَاعِهَا وَمِنْ وَمِنْ الْجِبَالِ وَالْأَشْجَارِ وَالْأَحْجَارِ وَمِنْ الْمَعَادِنِ وَمِنْ الْبِحَارِ هَذِهِ مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى الْآيَاتُ الْقَوْنِيَةُ الَّتِي تُرَى وَتُشَاهِدُ وَتُشَاهِدُ وَتُرَى وَتُشَاهِدُ so then the shaykh also mentions from the ayah, the translations of the ayahs we just read. Um, you can see and you can understand that also, like the seven heavens, there's the seven earths. And, and, the, and the shaykh mentions that and he says, and likewise, just how the seven heavens are arranged in order, uh, same thing with the seven earths, one, on, one above the other, arranged in that, in that way. And also, and each level has its exist, existing, from the creation has its things that live there. Um, from the different types of uh, creatures and then the sheikh also mentions here for example there's planets uh, and and uh, you know the stars the galaxies the sun the moon etc um and, and and other creations from uh, the creations like uh, four-legged creatures for example like cattle you know uh, that tread upon the earth things like this these the mountains the trees the stones uh, the minerals and uh, types of metals and all, all these things in the sea itself as well, seas. So uh, the Sheikh just mentions it generally to us here. And the uh, final point in this uh, paragraph is that uh, all of this, you know, we see it. We see it. We see the sun and the moon. We see the sea. We can see all around us what's going on. So it's it, the, all of this is seen and it's, it's, it's viewed and seen. So the Sheikh continues and he says, قال رحمه الله والدليل قوله تعالى ومن آياته الليل والنهار وشمس والقمر لا تسجدوا للشمس ولا للقمر واسجدوا لله الذي خلقهن إن كنتم إياه تعبدون. And we read this ayah earlier at the start of the lesson, so that's mentioned again, and then the sheikh is going to explain it to us. So from the signs, from his signs, from Allah's signs, the night are the night and the day, the sun and the moon. Don't prostrate to the sun. Do not prostrate to the moon. But prostrate to Allah who created them. If you truly worship him. So this is obviously pointing us towards, if we remember and remind ourselves, it's, it's reminding us of uh, uh, the difference of Tawheed and Shirk. And that we're being informed here, being commanded not to fall into shirk. We're, you know, commanded not to fall into shirk. So let's continue. So the Sheikh says, "Min ayatihi layl, yani min alamatihi dala ala rububiya, ala rububiya wa qudratihi wa istihqaqihi lilibada duna siwa al layl aladhi yublim wa al nahar aladhi yudi al koun kullahu." So then, so we're breaking it down now. So the ayah, if you just remind yourselves how it, be, how it did begin, then the first thing is uh, uh, the, the night. So so the sheikh says, and so from his signs of the night. Then the sheikh mentions the night. He says, meaning um, uh, from the signs that point us towards Allah's lordship and his ability and his deservedness of all worship without associating any partners with him, then that is 
because of this great, uh, great and magnificent creation of his the night as an example which you know makes makes the earth it, it, it makes the earth dark and as we are in the night now most of us in the uk it's dark and likewise it also for example uh, in terms of the sun as well you know it, it enlightens uh, the earth uh, and 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 so you can see you know so um and the sheikh says that this is from one of those amazing the amazing signs of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we just uh, ponder over it then the sheikh continues and he says fa man alladhi yaj'al alqawm kullahu mudliman fi an wahid thumma yaj'al alqawm kullahu mudi'an fi an wahid huwa allah subhanahu wa ta'ala law ijtama' al khalq ala an yudi'u bukatan min al ard ma istata'u an yudi'u illa bukatan mahdudatan illa bukatan mahdudatan law ja'u bi maka'in al kahraba allati fi al dunya kull allati fi al dunya kullaha la tudi'u illa juz'an mahdudan min al ard so what the sheikh is now is bringing it as a contrast and comparison to um to what the creation are capable of what Allah is capable of so uh, so the sheikh says so who is it, so who is it that that you know is able to uh, do this that, to make to make the earth all dark in darkness and, and, and to make it as in his night time in one instance or one period of time and then in another period of time make it all light and so you can see everything and the sheikh says it's Allah of course it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he says if the creation got together if all of creation got together to try and light up the earth for example let's say if all the human kind got together to try and light up earth as allah does which is with, with, with the sun in terms of everything's lit up isn't it when the sun's ris- uh, has risen everything you can see everything it's clear as day right as i say if the people got together to do that for example they wouldn't be able to do it even if they use their electronic devices and technology that they have for example they would only be able to light specific areas of of, of the earth you know it's not going to be if when we compare that to the sun as you if you compare it it's not it's not possible um so the sheikh is show, uh, contrasts there and compares just to help us understand and to uh, perhaps appreciate that blessing you know the blessing of allah the blessings of allah the many blessings of allah so the sheikh makes an essay and and he makes that point and then we continue the sheikh says amma shams wal qamar fa huma yudiani al ard kullaha al layl wal nahar yataqaban wa shams wal qamar kadhalika qala ta'ala la tasjudu lil shamsi wala lil qamari wasjudu lillahi alladhi khalaqahunna in kuntum iyyahu ta'budun hadha ibtal hadha ibtal lil shirk لا تسجد للمخلوقات لأن من من أعظم المخلوقات الشمس والقمر ولأن المشركين كانوا يعبدون الشمس ويسجدون لها ومنهم من يعبد القمر والكواكب مثل قوم إبراهيم يبنون لها هياكل على سورة الكواكب ويعبدونها فقولوا تعالى فقولوا تعالى لا تسجد للشمس السجود معناها وضع الجبهة معناه وضع الجبهة على الأرض خدوعا للمعبود وهو أعظم أنواع العبادة ورسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول أقرب ما يكون العبد العبد من ربه وهو ساجد So um, this is a big long paragraph so let's just go there. So the Sheikh says as for the sun and the moon so they are you know two entities that light up you know the earth all of it the the, the light of the earth you know they have their purposes we 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 all we've talked about that it's clear you know you have the night and you have the day and the, you know the night and the day like the sun and the moon you know one comes and the other one goes and the other one comes and the other one goes and it's all it's like this every day without fail and the sheikh mentioned that uh, part of the ayah which 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 is the main topic around this uh, subject today and he mentions and he says uh, he says uh, he quotes a part of the ayah that we've read a few times already it says don't prostrate uh, to the do not prostrate to the uh, to the sun 
and don't prostrate to the moon. Um, rather, prostrate to Allah who created them to, who created the sun and the moon. Prostrate to Allah, or the one who created them to, if you truly worship Allah. So the Shaykh says that this is uh, uh, basically nullifying shirk, as we understand. Because if somebody says that they worship Allah and then all of a sudden they also are prostrating to the sun and the moon, just as an example here, um, as we know, there's many things that people can worship, of course. Uh, in previous lessons that we went through but just as an example if somebody uh, says I'm worshipping Allah okay they're worshipping Allah but then you know the sun rises and all of a sudden they, they're prostrating to the sun and also at the night time prostrating to the moon then you know they are falling into shirk and so we understand this ayah as well is clear to us in terms of it's, it's, it's nullifying shirk so not to commit shirk being commanded not to commit is being prohibited from it and as in the Sheikh says here, for example, so don't prostrate to any of the creation. Do not prostrate to any of the creation because, because, because if you're not gonna, if Allah said, don't prostrate to the greatest, the most magnificent of the creation out there, which is the sun and the moon, why would you do anything that's less as well, just in general? And the Sheikh says, the Sheikh mentions also, he says, because also that the the polytheists, they you they worship the sun and they worship uh, uh, and and they prostrate to the sun. And some of them and from them are those who worship the moon as well and the planets alike. For example, like the people of Ibrahim, and of course, there's people today as well that do this. Um, uh, that, uh, for example, as an example, the people of Ibrahim who used to uh, make structures. So they used to build these uh, um, idols and structures in the in in in, uh, in uh, as a reflection of these planets, etc. That they used to worship, and then they used to worship and prostrate to them. Then the Sheikh quotes ayah, uh, the ayah, part of the ayah that we've already read, and says, uh, and it mentions here, "Don't prostrate to the sun." So the Sheikh mentions, he says here, prostration. What does it mean? The meaning of prostration, a sujood, means when you put your forehead down to the earth, touching it um, in a state of lowliness and fear and awe, like this, to that which you are worshipping. This is the definition of sujood. And the Sheikh uh, mentions the benefit here. He says, and sujood itself, obviously, when doing correctly, it's the it's the create it's the it's it's the greatest. It's from the greatest types of ibadah. It's the greatest type of ibadah. And and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, um, when the servant of Allah, a servant of Allah, is closest to Allah when he puts his forehead to the ground, when he is prostrating, in that moment, in that instance, um, uh, the servant of Allah is closest to his Lord. Right? Not in physicality, of course. That's understandable, inshallah. So, um, okay, so uh, let's carry on. Um, so the Sheikh uh, continues and he says, فَآذَمُ أَنْوَا الْإِبَادَةِ السُّجُودِ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ لِأَنَّا وَجْهَكَ لِأَنَّا وَجْهَكَ الَّذِي هُوَ أَعَزُّ شَيْءٍ أَعَزُّ شَيْءٍ عِنْدَكَ وَدَعْتَهُ لِلَّهِ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ تَعْبُودًا لِلَّهِ وَتَذَلُّلًا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى هَذَا هُوَ السُّجُودِ الْحَقِيقِ وَلَا يَلِيقُ التَّعَبُّ وَلَا وَلَا يَلِيقُ التَّعَبُّ بِهِ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ So then the Shaykh says, so the greatest, the greatest type, the greatest type of worship is prostration, as, as, as you mentioned. And is prostrating and putting your forehead to the ground. As we know, prostration, yes, sujood. The Shaykh says, because your face, which is the most, you know, your face is something that, you know, a face is something that's uh, great in the human body. It's, you know, something that's great, that's revered, you know, it's looked at, that is, uh, you know, um, um, given weight, as in that affair. The face is an important part of the body and you're putting it to the ground. You're putting your face to the floor, right? 
for Allah. You're doing it for Allah's sake. To, to worship Allah. And you're lowering yourself. Your face is something that you're, you know, you're, uh, in, in, you know, you respect and that it has a standing with you, you know, people's faces, you know, it's that, it's that, you know, your head and your face is the highest thing on your, uh, on your body. It's a top part and you're putting it to the ground and you're lowering yourself in, in worship of uh, Allah, uh, you know. So, it, 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 the uh, Sheikh gives an example there as well. And this is the true sujood, the, the, the true prostration. And no one else is deserving of this except Allah, as the Shaykh mentioned. So then the Shaykh continues. So then he says, أَمَّا السُّجُودُ لِشَمْسِ وَالْقَمْرِ فَهُوَ سُجُودُ لِمَخْلُوقٍ لَا يَسْتَحِقُّ أَنْ يُسْجَدُ لَهُ فَلَا يَجُوزُ السُّجُودُ لِلْمَخْلُوقَاتِ وَإِنَّمَا السُّجُودُ لِخَالِكَ الْمَخْلُوقَاتِ أَمَّا الْمَخْلُوقَاتِ فَهِيَ مِثْلُكْ وَقَوْلُهُ تعالى إِنَّ رَبُّكُمُ اللَّهُ الَّذِي خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ ثُمَّ اسْتَوَى عَلَى الْعَرْشِ يُغْشِي اللَّيْلَ النَّهَارَ يَطْلُبُهُ حَثِيثًا وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ وَالنُّجُومَ مُسَخَّرَاتٍ بِأَمْرِهِ أَلَا لَهُ الْخَلْقُ وَالْأَمْرُ تَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ Al-Araf verse 54 We'll just go to that in a second. Let's finish the uh, paragraph. مخلوقة مدبرة متصرف فيها هل تسجد لمخلوق عاجز مثلك هذا لا هذا لا يجوز أين ذه أين ذهبت الوقود؟ so then the sheikh mentions here he says as for prostrating to the sun for example and the moon this is prostrating to a creation one of Allah's creations you're prostrating you're a creation of Allah that's prostrating to another creation of Allah that does not deserve to be prostrated to. So therefore, it's, 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 not, it's impermissible to prostrate uh, to the creation, any of the creation. Rather, um, prostration is made to the creator. Right? The creator of all of these things. So we, 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 we direct our prostration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the creation, for example, your it doesn't deserve worship, it's just like you, you're created, it's created. It doesn't it not it doesn't make even it was it doesn't even make logical sense to uh, you bow down to something else that's created just like you. Because it's like you. Uh, and then the Sheikh mentions, for example, it's it's uh, for example, uh, if you you bind uh, bowing down or even prostrating to um, another creation is created just like you, uh, you know. It, it's 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 um, you know uh, it has its kadar that Allah plays upon it. It's 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 powerless as well. It's not able to do really anything, you know. And so it doesn't deserve worship. And uh, and and like we gave examples earlier uh, that that you know it has it has its weaknesses. All of these things in the in the creation have its we have have their weaknesses, but Allah is all perfect. They are powerful, capable of everything. So let's just go to this ayah that was mentioned here at the top of the page. Uh, Surah Al-Araf, verse 8. Let me just go there. One second. Verse 8. Let's just read that verse. Uh, verse 54, sorry. My mistake. Verse 54, apologies. Let me just go there. Verse 54. So if you read out verse 54, the translation. Indeed, your Lord is Allah who created the heavens and the earth in six days. And then he rose over the throne in a manner that suits his majesty. He brings the night as a cover over the day, seeking it rapidly. And he created the sun, the moon, the stars, subjected to his command. Surely he is the creator. Surely his is the creation and commandment. Blessed be Allah, the Lord of the Alameen, mankind, jinns, and all that exists. So that's what we mentioned there. That's clear. That's uh, uh, in context to what we've been reading. So the Shaykh continues and he says, As-sujood inna ma yastahiqu al-khaliq subhanahu wa ta'ala alladhi la ya'jizuhu shay' or la yu'jizuhu shay' 
فالسجود حق لله عز وجل وليس حقا للمخلوق مهما كان هذا المخلوق من الإذم والكبر فإنه مخلوق ضعيف مدبر متصرف فيه لا تسجدوا للشمس ولا للقمر واسجدوا لله الذي خلقهن إن كنتم إياه تعبدون So the Sheikh mentions here, so therefore, he says prostration, um, uh, it's the creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is, is deserved of pros- being prostrated to, and nothing else, nothing from the creation, whether it be big, whether it's small, it don't matter how big it is, or magnificent it might be, it has its weaknesses, it's under the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's under the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we, as we read the translation of the ayah over there, uh, uh, from Surah Al-Araf, and, and and so therefore uh, the point being made here is that uh, that Allah is deserved of all worship and uh, as we mentioned earlier as well the Sheikh mentioned that the greatest types of um, uh, the greatest type of worship is sujood isn't it so um, you know that Allah deserves that and nothing else so then let's continue we'll just finish here I believe We'll finish here, inshallah, just this small paragraph. فَالْوَاجِبُ أَنْ لَا نَعْبُدَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَإِذَا سَجَدْتُمْ لَهُ وَسَجَدْتُمْ بِغَيْرِهِ فَإِنَّكُمْ لَا تَكُونُونَ عَابِدِينَ اللَّهِ لِبَادَةَ الصَّحِيحَةِ بَلْ تَعْبُدُونَهُ مَا شِرْكْ وَشِرْكْ يُفْسِدُ لِبَادَةَ so, so the Sheikh says here, so what's obligatory then upon us after uh, learning about and reading and uh, pondering over uh, the t- today's topic is that that we don't worship anything except Allah. So we worship Allah and nothing else. We own Allah's deserved of all worship. So the Shaykh says, so if you prostrated uh, uh, to him, to Allah subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you also prostrated to other than him, for indeed then you aren't worshipping Allah correctly you're not worshiping allah correctly rather you are worshiping him and uh, and associating partners with him and falling into shirk as we've established that now and also the shirk makes a final point and he says that shirk it corrupts and uh, it corrupts and falsifies your worship so if you're worshiping allah but then you end up committing shirk and and uh, falling into shirk it corrupts your ibadah and not accepted, and there's even more graver danger when falling into uh, a shirk akbar, for example, this type of shirk, then all your deeds are nullified, all your good deeds, everything is nullified, and you end up going outside of the fold of Islam until you seek forgiveness, if you realize, uh, and um, come back into the fold of Islam, right? So, but you start, uh, imagine, uh, we give that example before, remember the example uh, that I mentioned, as your bank balance, going to zero so all of your savings everything you look at your bank balance and all of a sudden it's zero well that's that'll be the situation so you know it's it's a really uh, a dangerous affair that we can fall into we need to be aware of it alhamdulillah so that's why we're learning it so inshallah we'll stop there um and um we'll uh, uh, reconvene these uh, start restart these lessons again inshallah and continue after ramadan and eid and i'm going to try and do some lessons during ramadan uh, uh, that go to the benefits of Ramadan, inshallah. So um, I, I will let you guys know about that in the group, inshallah, about the timings and um, what, what we'll go through, inshallah. So, uh, but this book, uh, Usura Thalatha, the three fundamental principles, we will uh, come back to it, inshallah, uh, by the permission of Allah, uh, after Ramadan, I mean. Barakallah fikum. Subhanakullah wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.